Dari kama tono wan, wacok tondering taiwoni. Sapo kaita meniok apa taiwoni. Dari kama tono wan, dari kama tono wan. Wacok tondering taiwoni, sapo makai tamniok apa taiwoni? Yori kamu tonoan, wacok tondering taiwoni, sapo kai tamniok apa taiwoni? Yori kama tono wan, wacok tondering taiwoni. Sapo kaita meniok apa taiwoni. For all these things we pray, I mean. And so, um. Um, I give you a opium that are that are here for you know for the presentation, and um, um, whatever you hear or the the different things again celebrating this month, uh, Native American Heritage Month. Um, that one of the gifts that I know, the great gifts that I know that can happen is when people share what they have, and so even in in your knowledge in your system, whatever you 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 learn today. Uh, it would be a great thing to go out and share with people that were not in this uh, meeting, um, or were not, were not, um, could not uh, attend. You know, to share the words that uh, we have, uh, how much a day to to offer. Uh, it takes time for people to, you know, put these things together. And again, when you're about, uh, you're, you're nobody's really paying to to come here uh, to this session. But again, the, the, I think the payment would be to share the knowledge and to share the whatever experiences you have, and to uh, to ask questions. You know, that's another uh, form of uh, sharing. It's that because you have a, a inquiry that it would help. So if you have any questions, you can you can write them down, or you can uh, put them in the chat and you know during the time. But I'll go ahead right now and introduce uh, Francis. Benavides is the um, director of the Donna Autumn Studies, and she'll do uh, the rest of her invitation or her um, um, bio for 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 you all. So, okay, Francis, de maha. Thank you, Canelis, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Anyana chege Francis Benavides, anyamki ahotap ni familia San Simon Amjet besen mochikshan. It's been nice celebrating Native American Heritage Month through our virtual presentation series. And we're glad that you could all join us today for our second session where we'll feature three students from Donatham Community College who are going to share with us a little bit about their culture. And so with us today, we have Ms. Josie P of the Southern Paiute Tribe of Utah, Ms. Naomi Lupi of the White Mountain Tribe of Arizona, and then Ms. Teresa Choiwa, who's going to speak and be a representative of the Thana Anthem Nation. And so I believe Ms. Andrea is going to play the video, which she helped put together. And we're very grateful for the student speakers and also for Andrea's technical expertise here. November is Native American Heritage Month. For our second session, we'll be having the cultural exchange celebrating the cultural diversity of Thana Autumn Community College students. Featuring the following students, Naomi Lupe, White Mount Apache, Josephine Pete, Paiute Tribe of Utah, and Teresa Chuiwa, before we jump into the video, we wanted to share a little about our college with you. TOCC is located in the most southern part of Arizona on the Thana Autumn Nation. 
These maps here show the traditional lands of the Thana Autumn, with the map on the left illustrating the traditional land base of the Autumn in orange, and the red illustrating the modern day federally recognized land base of the Thana Autumn. The map on the right gives a more detailed look at the nation with the 11 districts that make up the Thana Autumn nation demonstrated here. Much like states have counties representing the different regions of the state, the Thana Autumn nation has districts. At TOCC, we have five campuses with three located here on the Thana Autumn Nation. We have our Wishak Gosh Mashamakut, the Kamshkari Wausik Mashamakut, and the Strik Thoak Mashamakut. We have a site in Phoenix, the Skikik Mashamaki, and San Carlos Apache College is also a TOCC site. In the past year, we've extended our course offerings to include online virtual courses, which has allowed students from across the state to take courses here at TOCC. This map illustrates the student body from the spring 2021 semester, where we had 55 sovereign nations represented at TOCC and the number continues to grow. From the far northwest region of Washington state to the most southeastern region of Florida state to the west coast of California, all the way to the northeastern part of the country, our students are zooming in and taking online courses from across the US. Here are some of the tribal seals of the distinct sovereign nations our TOCC student body represent. There are some commonalities within the seals too. Many highlight significant landmarks, animals, values, and symbols that demonstrate unique aspects of each tribe. For today's session, three TOCC students will share about their culture with us. Naomi Lupe, White Mount Apache. Dot as she Naomi Lupi once at the Kaisa un Dan Shli, um, the Chidiho Yetna Fitchish Arti and Dit Kaisa un and De Ibiga. Um, hello, my name is Naomi Lupi. I'm from the White Mountain Apache tribe. Um, so today I'll be presenting to you a little bit about my tribe. Um, but my major, I am attending to Tahona Onum Community College and San Carlos Community College. I'm majoring in early education and Honestly, my um, choosing to attend the college was um, the free tuition, but it's been definitely a life-changing experience. Um, I've been out of school for probably over a decade. And to come back to go to school, um, you know, I was hesitant, but definitely one of the best decisions I've made um, I actually surprised myself in the spring semester, I actually made the principal's uh, dean's list. And this semester at mid midterm check, I was still carrying a 4.0 GPA. So, you know, it's definitely been, um, like I said, a life-changing uh, decision to go back to school. And I appreciate TOCC and San Carlos Community College for giving me the opportunity to um, come back and go to school and get my degree in early childhood education. Thank you. So I'm from the White Mountain Apache tribe. And, um, you know, when I first started at TOCC, I got asked a lot about where my tribe was located, um, just general information. So that's what I'm going to share with you today is um, just general information about my tribe. And this is our great seal. And I've traveled across the country. And I have to admit, I think we have one of the most detailed great seal that I've seen. Um, so I'm going to explain a little bit about that. So the background, which is all black, um, it represents the universe um, and where the creator gave light to the White Mountain Apache people. Uh, the water is a symbol symbolism of life 
Um, it's the sustaining waters that flow from the melt melting snows of the sacred White Mountains. Um, it gives life to the abundance of wildlife such as deer, elk, and many other animals that the Apaches hunt. Um, you know, and I think that's just uh, in general for everyone, water is life. Um, and for us, it comes from the waterheads of um, our sacred mountains. And the rainbow is a crest of the White Mountains and adds a crown to the beauty of the land is a symbol and it's a symbolism of peace. Um, the tall pine tree in the uh, Great Seal um, represents the abundance of ponderosa pine that we have growing on our land. Um, we also have the largest stand of ponderosa pine in the state of Arizona. Um, it is, and it's also a livelihood for a lot of people. Uh, we also recently were able to start our timber industry again. So, you know, that's definitely giving a livelihood to a lot of our tribal members. Um, the wiki up, which is also depicted in the Great Seal is um, an ancient and unique Apache home. Um, and in Apache is called Goa. And the tus, which is toward the bottom is a water container and it's made from uh, native reeds and coated with the pitch that's made from the uh, pinyon trees. And from my understanding, the Apaches have maintained that ancient craft in making the twists. Um, and, you know, personally, it smells really good. I like the way it smells. Uh, the, and then we have the four sacred colors, which is um, white, black, yellow, and blue. And they have all their own representation, um, but they're mostly used as uh, uh, for prayers. Um, to the creator, you know, definitely from blessing us with a new day from, you know, night to day. And the symbolism of the crown dancer, you can see it's an outline. Um, and the uh, crown dancer headdress is the symbolism of the White Mountain, uh, you know, spir uh, uh, spirits. And they're considered supernatural beings who have um, healing powers. And uh, the eagle feathers are to acknowledge the teacher that flew the highest into the heaven. Um, and I think the eagle is just a representation for a lot of Native American tribes uh, across the country. And the lightnings are just sacred symbols that are placed on the bodies of the crown dancers um, who are instructed by mysterious mountain spirits to performing he healing rituals for the Apache people. And they're also used in um, the pu puberty ceremonies for the coming of age of our young girls. But the White Mountain Apache tribe um, was uh, is actually, I guess, officially White Mountain Apache tribe of the Fort Apache Indian Reservation, which was established November 9th, um, 1891. Um, so some historical facts about the White Mountain Apache tribe. In 1871, um, General Crook was named commander of the Department of Arizona. During office, uh, he realized his military soldiers were no match in tracking Apache warriors. So in that same year, he roughly recruited about 500 Apache men to serve as the first Apache scouts. Um, and uh, you know, for in remembrance of the Apache scout, our official newspaper is actually called the Apache scout. Um, the Apache scouts would be vital in the Apache wars, which I was, really wasn't familiar with. Um, until I started classes at TOCC, and I'm actually taking a course in it this fall, um, History 130. So I'm learning a lot about the Apache Wars. Um, so, you know, that would go on for the next 15 years um, with the surrender of Geronimo in 1886. Um, the most renowned and recognized scout was Chief William Alchese, who eventually um, would be awarded the highest decoration of honor, which was the Medal of Honor. Um, he, our high school is actually also named after him, Alchese High School. Um, our sports pavilion is also named after him. Um, when he became Christian, his grandpa, his, um, God, sorry, godparents were actually um, Reverend Gunther, um, his parents who established the First Lutheran Church on our reservation. Um, so Chief Alchese was the last hereditary chief of the White Mountain Apache people and was known for his friendship with Geronimo until uh, Geronimo's death, but he was known to try uh, to get Geronimo to surrender when he was captured and temporarily held custody um, at Fort Apache. Um, but, you know, he 
um, didn't last long there. He broke out and went on his um, raids again. Um, but for their services, uh, they were able to secure a portion of our present day reservation. So, you know, for their services, um, we still have a lot of our beautiful land and that's thanks to their services um, to the uh, US military. And so just a little bit about the what, facts about the White Mountain Apache tribe. If you look at the map, um, you know, we're pretty much four hours from the most major cities such as Flagstaff and Phoenix and even um, Albuquerque. So we're pretty remote. Um, there are over roughly 16 um, thousand enrolled tribal members. We have about 1.6 million acres of land ranging from a 2,600 elevation of high desert to 11,400 elevation of the tallest end of Ponderosa Pine in the state. Um, the highest point on our reservation is Mount Baldy, which is 11,403 feet um, and is sacred to the White Mountain Apache people. And, you know, again, it's also depicted in the Great Seal. And, you know, just um, a fact that, you know, we do have trails, hiking trails that are stateside um, that uh, people are allowed to hike. And my mom's hiked it like, gosh, six times. And I think she said round trip, it's like an 18 mile hike. Um, but, you know, of course you aren't able to hike all the way to the peak unless you have um, special permission from the tribe, but you can hike up to one of the peaks that's closest to Mount Baldy. Um, and like I said, you know, that's like an 18 mile trek. Um, so another fact about the White Mountain Apache tribe, um, you know, we have roughly over 400 miles of uh, streams and lakes. Um, the High Lakes on the reservation is home to the world's only species of, of Apache trout, and it's also the rarest. Um, it also is the state fish of Arizona, and the largest was caught back in 1993, measuring at 24 inches and over five pounds. Um, and it was caught at Hurricane Lake, which is one of our, um, uh, what is it called? Rent a lake program that the tribe offers. So there's two private lakes on the reservation um, that you can actually rent out um, by the day. And this is one of them. Um, and it's really in a, it's kind of nestled at the foot of the Mount Baldy wilderness. Um, it's really a beautiful area to fish and hike. Um, they, uh, you know, the pro tribe provides just about everything um, when, when you rent it out for the day. So in the early 1900s, this species was nearly extinct due to settlers harvesting hundreds of Apache trout. So I mean, um, I wasn't able to find a picture, but it was just um, devastating to see how, many, how much people were overfishing um, for this species. So by the mid 1950s, the tribe closed the fishing of all the streams and the Apache trout became one of the first species listed under the Endangered Species Act of 1969. Um, you know, I've worked so many different um, jobs on the reservation. One of them, I worked as a fisheries technician. And, you know, that's kind of a restoration program that we did. Um, and um, that, you know, it's efforts by the tribe that was implemented back in 1975. Um, and with the tribe's effort, we were able to get the Apache trout from the endangered, being listed endangered to just threatened. Um, but today, you know, we have um, in the highest part of our reservation um, in the closed area, um, you know, we do have pure lines of uh, Apache trout. Um, so, you know, the, it was taken off, like I said, in 1975. Um, so, you know, those are just uh, fun facts about our um, about my tribe, and it's a lot of information that people who are not familiar with the area, I get asked a lot about it. Um, what's your location? Where are you at? What is the language speaking, spoken? And mostly on our reservation, we speak the Western Apache. Um, I'm fluent. You know, I'm proud to say that I'm fluent. Um, I understand and I speak it, um, which for my generation, it's rare, um, especially with the younger generation, it's becoming even more rare that you're going to find um, native speakers. And I think that's just in general um, with a lot of tribes, you know, I think that's something that we're um, kind of battling on the forefront is um, cultural preservation. So I think um, being asked to do this presentation definitely has been an honor to be asked to do it. Um, and to even be considered for it. Um, but, you know, this is a picture of one of our um, 
crown dancers and you know the headdresses they're not all the same they're all made different um not one headdress is the same um so you know they're all like i said they're different they have all, they're all their different meanings based on um you know what they're being used for but this is uh just a picture of our apache crown dancers um but again my name is naomi lupi and i really am humbled um, to have been asked to do this presentation. And I hope I was able to give you a little bit of information about my tribe, um, you know, and what um, my culture is about. Ashunk, thank you. Josephine Peet, Paiute Tribe of Utah. Hello, my name is Josie Peet, and I am from Cedar City, Utah. I am a member of the Paiute Tribe, and I am currently going to TOCC. I am majoring in art, studio art. And yeah, let me share some information about my tribe. Okay. And so, like I said, I'm a member of the Paiute tribe of Utah. And there's our logo. And so my tribe has five different bands for the Utah portion. We also have the Nevada Paiutes as well as the Arizona Paiutes. But I'm gonna talk specifically about the Utah ones because that's where I'm from. Anyways, we have five different bands. We have Cedar, Indian Peaks, Shivwitz, Tusharam, and Kanosh. And we are residing in the Southwest corner of Utah and we were federally recognized in April, on April 3rd of 1980. And yeah, so the bands are actually made up of different families because that's how we were, how we used to travel around. So the Cedar Band is actually one of the newer bands. And my grandfather actually helped um, assemble the band just so that we can get some uh, money for our people and try to build a brighter future and here's some historical facts about us uh, we are known as the peaceful foragers we lived in wikiups and we were very good um, farmers we actually had um, some pretty advanced aqueducts for native people and yeah we were very good at farming we were good at hunting as well but we never really fought with anyone um as far as adversity came um when the spanish came over and brought horses our people started getting kidnapped by um our friendly neighbors the Utes and the Navajo and we were sold to the Europeans as slaves but other than that we were very peaceful we actually are known for um, helping others and initially I thought that was just my family in general that um, just like to help others but it is a core value that has been passed down for generations and yeah here's some old photos and we are still here um so we do have different powwows um throughout the year our dancers are made up of our own people as well as those who live around us and i have a few pictures and in the top left corner we have a few of our a bunch of our members playing a game called hand game and it is um to sum it up and put it uh, simply it's like a guessing game between two teams and basically what we would do is we would guess how many bones a person has and the bones is a fancy term for a stick that we use and yeah it's pretty much a guessing game and i got a bunch of pictures from our various members and the top right hand corner is our ditu queen she's a 
very nice young woman. Um, she uh, does a lot for our community and all of our um, PITU uh, royalty represent us as a people at different powwows and different um, events. And so we are still here. Um, our land is actually uh, very massive. And when it comes down to it, um, it's not all about the land. Most of us live inside of the cities. Um, for instance, Cedar Band is within the city limits of Cedar City. Yeah, so our reservation is kind of weird in Cedar, but that is a long story. This is uh, a few things that I would like to share about my community, my tribe, and a special thanks to the Paiute Tribe of Utah, as well as the Cedar Band of Paiutes, the PITU royalty, and my family, and the various other people who had sent me photos of different cultural events, as well as those who have shared stories with me. Okay, and that is it. Teresa Chuiwa, Tahna Atam. Skuktash, Anya Nyapchugi, Teresa Chuiwa. Chiaki Ia, Komchkut Oasi, but how about Nikika Mo, see Nikika Mo covered well, Smash Wahia. In the Ogbot, Jenya, Jobot, old. Banjo to Nita Juiwa. Jenyawaska but Jenikak but old Gardorina to Antonio Juiwa. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today representing the TOCC student panel. TOCC has been so uh, valuable in my life that it provides education locally for us. And um, as the pandemic hit, it was important to feel some type of normalcy. And I heard you had to be an, a native and have an enrollment card and you can get tuition free from TOCC. So I enrolled and I'm so excited to be to toward the end of my Tona Autumn Studies degree. I, I just love the idea of learning. I try to promote learning for, for everyone. And I am an older student, an adult student, and TOCC uh, is invaluable along with the services it provides as uh, San Carlos Community College. And the um, ability to be in a class and have students from all over the country just adds so much uh, learning to our experience at TOCC. I am a member of the Thonal Autumn Nation and we are located in South Central Arizona. We share about 65 miles of our Southern border um, is the international boundary with Mexico. However, traditionally, historically, our people uh, went deep into Mexico and uh, also North um, up to the Phoenix area and out West uh, toward Yuma and the East to the San Pedro River. So we currently have a reservation. Our reservation is 2.8 million acres. We have about 32,000 enrolled tribal members. And um, we have casinos. Our nation's government is located here in Cells. Uh, we are home to the National Observatory called Kit Peak, although Autumn call it Yardagum Doak. And it's located here with an elevation about 6,000. We have all kinds of beautiful land here from uh, the big trees up in the mountains down to the plains. And uh, we have the most beautiful desert in the world. Uh, we are the home to the saguaro cactus, which we uh, harvest every year. And I love to do that. We make syrup and we also um, use it for our rain ceremonies. As desert people, rain is very important to us, and uh, we continue that tradition. I am so proud today to be here uh, representing the Thona Autumn students at Thona Autumn Community College. I do have a previous associate's degree from liberal arts that I, that I um, earned there, and uh, it helped me get into a bachelor's program, and I completed that. So 
what I'm doing now there is purely for love and purely for um, um, the love of my culture, the love of Tanyok. Uh, they say our language is very important and we must really, we all together must work really hard to try to preserve and to revitalize. And I would so much love to be part of that effort. So um, I'm doing my groundwork, I'm, I'm studying and I'm, I, I need to practice a little bit more. I didn't grow up speaking autumn. I heard it all my life. I grew up, uh, my first language was actually Spanish. Um, and so I think uh, our experiences are really important. And uh, we have been, and we continue to struggle through this era of history with this uh, pandemic that is around us. And as tribal nations, it has affected us as we um, have had to you know, see our relatives be affected or people in our family. And on the other hand, I have also seen the resilience of our people and the love and the care that they have for each other because uh, for our tribe, we have a mask mandate. So we, we are, are keeping our hands clean, using sanitizer, and we're doing what we need to do to keep ourselves safe as well as our relatives and um, getting those vaccinations. But um, I think um, the pandemic has also given us pause that we were able to stop and, and to decide and to think about what is important in our life. And because, uh, you know, we live in a world pre-pandemic that was just so fast, just boom, 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 always moving. And so now that uh, with the pandemic, um, we have had a chance to um, think about some priorities and slow down. You know, we can't run to Tucson all the time. So we, you know, we've had to slow down a little bit. And I think that's, that's good for us. Um, it's not a bad thing. And I've seen, um, um, I have seen the, the, the love and generosity of our people come forward, the caring. Um, I have been able to express love and caring to people. And I'm just gonna share this um, small little thing. Um, I was already in isolation before the pandemic because um, I had a stem cell transplant. I have a, a blood cancer called multiple myeloma. And after my transplant, I had to be um, isolated. So this was pre-pandemic. And then um, when it hit, um, everybody had to be isolated. Everybody had to wear a mask. And um, it was um, it was really neat, you know, I mean, not neat, not the pandemic, but um, the outpouring of support that I received personally, prayers. And I think um, that's a norm now where we tell each other, I'll pray for you, or hey, I love you because tomorrow's not promised. And tomorrow is uh, is, uh, is is always a, a variable, right? We don't know what's going to happen to us, to our families, the people we love. But we can prioritize now and spend that quality time with our people. We can tell people now that uh, we love them. Tell them while they're here. Spend time with them. And I've always loved that about our autumn people that we spend um, time together, quality time. We talk about family history. We talk about how we are interrelated. We tell stories that keep um, maybe our ancestors two, three generations before we keep them in our memories. We have just celebrated our Rimoshan, which I'm not gonna speak too much about, but you know that's a really important um, tradition for us to remember our ancestors. And uh, and, uh, and that's part of life, we, we're not here forever. So the other thing with the pandemic for me has been that um, we have to live our best life. We have to live our best life every single day. And the pandemic slash cancer, you know, that has made that a reality for me. I've had to look at um, what kind of employee I am. Could I be a better employee? what kind of student I am, what kind of friend I am, what kind of wife, um, mother I am, and to be the, put my best foot forward and to be supportive and to also um, welcome support. Uh, yesterday I was having a bad day, for example, and um, I was um, in Phoenix and I uh, 
was early in the morning. I got some stuff at Walmart. I went to um, to get some coffee at, um, and so uh, I was in Starbucks in the drive-through <laughs> and I got a uh, coffee and a sandwich. So I was counting out my change, my exact change to hand to the lady. And when I got to the window, she hands me my bag and she said, put your money away. The woman in front of you paid for your order. <gasps> that stuff never happens to me. So I was so uh, thrilled and I was so excited because um, it's, you know, in our autumn way, sometimes generosity is really important. Kindness is important. There's a way to be, you know, to be, uh, to be a good human. You know, yeah, it's good to have degrees and initials after your name or a DR in front of your name. But I think the most important um, autumn thing is to be a good human. And that, that's gonna mean something different to me. It's gonna mean something different to you. But I certainly believe it's worth um, it's worth considering. So um, I um, I'm the middle child of seven children, and um, our parents are both gone. Um, my mom passed away about 28 um, years ago, and I miss her every day. She was my friend. She was my confidant. She was my go-to person. And I was that for her too. So, you know, there was a time in my life where I, um, you know, I was uh, going to school. I was traveling to Tucson every day, four days out of the week going to school. And, uh, oh, actually even before this, okay. Even before this, I was going to school and I had a, had a baby. She was, you know, she was little and, and, uh, I didn't have no money. I was not working. He wasn't working. Uh, I was getting food stamps, and that's the real food stamps, not this, not this card that they have now. It was the ones you had to tear out. <laughs> uh, was getting general assistance from my tribe. I mean, uh, talk about poverty, and and you know, it's just what it was to survive. You know, that's the purposes of those programs. But it, I remember it was Mother's Day, and I went. Um, I didn't, wasn't able to see my mom. We had no car. We had no vehicle. I have a, I have like three cars now. Yay. Don't get too excited. Two of them are on blocks. Okay. So, but I had no car then. And um, I think I was helping out at some Mother's Day activity at our church. And so the next like Monday or Tuesday, my friend lent me his truck. So I went to go visit my mom. For Mother's Day, and I told her, you know, and I just felt um, kind of inadequate because I didn't have money to buy her a gift, you know, and I was just there visiting her, and she was working on her uh, baskets because at the women, that's one of the things we do in, in addition to playing toca and making pottery and cooking awesome food. Uh, she was working on her baskets, and and uh, I um I told her I said, hey mom, I didn't bring you a present but I'll get you something and she's she's like nah you know like that wasn't important to her you know so she was sitting there working on her baskets and we were chatting and then um my sister walked in and they started talking about um did you hear about Victor and uh, he left um Nikki and he's um messing around with whoever and I'm like I'm trying it's not my conversation so I'm not trying to listen to them I'm trying to just kind of then I can't take it. I'm like, who are they talking about? Those people from On the Gum, those people from Piss Them Off. Hey. <laughs> and she, and I, I, I finally asked, who are you guys talking about? And they both looked at me like, a young and the restless. They're talking about soap operas, you know, and it was kind of funny. And so uh, my mom was one of those people who just talked about everything, you know, like she, she was a very good um, uh, um, sharing information some things were very important some things were um were just everyday things sharing life so she tells me that she had gone to uh, the dental clinic and she was sitting there um, at her appointment waiting to get called and there was another woman sitting by her and this woman her name is um, anita my mother's name is also anita and this little lady um was um 
a lady that went to my church, right? So they start chatting and they talk and and my mom asks, uh, they talk, they start talking about church. So my mom asks her, um, oh, where do you go to church? And she said that she attends St. Mary's in Sales. And my mom, my mom said to her, oh, you might know my daughter. Um, she goes to church there. And the little lady says, oh, what's her name? And my mom says, oh, but you get Teresa. That's what my mom called me, Teresa. And then, uh, the little lady said to my mother, Oh, how, how, smachanik, Teresa. Shaisi skugat ui. Chimuki tsapwata, chimuki pawanta kumachkam. And uh, and I was I was like, wow, that was really nice of that lady to tell my mom that I was a, a good lady and that I was always helpful and I was happy. And that she knew me and I did she was my little friend her name was Anita and uh I was really you know it kind of touched me you know that um this woman told my mother this so my mother said to me after a few minutes of silence you know she says she says you know Teresa she goes what this lady said about you if other people say that about you then you never have to give me a mother's day present because that's my mother's day present. And how wonderful that is um, for me. I love sharing that story because I want to let you know that it does matter how you treat people every day, not just your friends, even strangers, um, being respectful, being kind, smiling, leaving people a little lighter, a little brighter, a little happier um, when you leave them. And I want to leave that with you. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to let me share. And um, I hope you have a great day and uh, happy Heritage Month. We have heritage every single day. Thank you. So, so the presentation so much for um, this time. And um, so now we have a lot of some time in for uh, any questions or inquiries or comments that anybody would like to share. Um, and the uh, people that are in the video are actually, some of them are on the Zoom call, how much? So, you know, they can respond to, if you have any personal things or any questions respecting, to come specifically to them. So go ahead and uh, open that. And if you have any questions, Bill, you can type it in the chat if you don't want to ask, or maybe you're having some difficulty, you know, um, zooming in or whatever, but you can hear it. You can write it in the chat. And then um, uh, Francis and Andrea will be um, monitoring that. And then uh, come up with that quote, um, what is in there. Um, so you can, you know, how to use Zoom. You should know if a student CLCC go to the more and then you scribe, go down and find the reactions and then raise your hand if you need to. Or you can just, you know, start, speak up because nobody's really saying anything. So you can just speak up and say, I am, you know, or this is me or whatever. And then we'll start, uh, we'll address, we will recognize you and then you can, you know, start to speak. Um, I know that a lot of places small, um, that have, uh, especially the classes, they, they have uh, like um, different ways to, to get attention, whatever. To me, I mean, Mama Samich said that most, most uh, policies for meetings is you get recognized by whoever's there to recognize you. So you just just say whoever. And that's only so that nobody's talking at the same time like that. So I want to ask uh, Francis and uh, Andrea, Namai Chidiki in the chat, is there anything or if any questions or anything you want to question? Camilla, there are no questions at this time. Oh, there's, so, yeah. just a, there's just um, a thank you from uh, Linda Chappelle to other presenters. So, and Linda is... She is uh, one of the art instructors over here at TOCC. 
So and if, if they said Andrea, it's supposed to be Sylvia monitoring the chat and um, giving us all the good news. No, my chat higgy. If we could have the, uh, since the panelists are here, the students that shared, maybe they can share a little bit more about what they thought about their presentations and feel already that way. Yeah, or if we left something out. Yeah. How? Uh, so I don't know, uh, Josie, Pete, or Naomi, Lupi, or Teresa Choi wants to um, share anything or add on or. There you go. Ani, uh, Camilla, somebody wrote in the chat, some, somebody wrote in the chat, was your gum sure good? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> That's kind of, yeah, um, <laughs> it, um, there seemed to be a little delay in my presentation. Like I felt like I was Godzilla in a Japanese movie and my mouth was moving, but my words weren't coming out. But I just want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in. This is the first uh, number one, and then we'll have another one at six o'clock. And so uh, I want to thank Naomi and also um, uh, the youth gal, I'm sorry, I'm bad with names, that uh, their presentations were really informative. I really, um, I really, I really enjoyed it. Especially um, Naomi, I know her family, and um, I just love going up to White River and also San Carlos. The Apache people have been really good um friends to me so it was really nice to um have her on the panel as well as um have san carlos be part of our college and that's all everybody have a great day thank you Tapo. <clears throat> naomi um are you present i want to yes, ask I you a am. question i want to ask you uh -huh. a question since we're doing this Heritage Month, you know that autumn, um, and hope that people are teaching you that autumn here, autumn, don't autumn, we have autumn in uh, Salt River, and we have um, autumn in Gila River and Akjun, and then we have autumn in Mexico, and all these different autumn, the Aboriginal land surrounds that whole area. And inside there, we, we the white man separated us into different tribes. And we bought into it because we're just, we're actually saying that, oh, I'm half Hilo River and half Dono and, you know, that kind of stuff. But a, a long time ago, 300 years ago, if you were autumn, you were autumn. It didn't matter. Now, the question that I have for you, and I, I asked this question to other people from um, White Mountain and San Carlos, is um, is the same thing like, like White Mountain and um, San Carlos, because I know San Carlos is divided into, I think, seven communities or seven towns. And what I understand is that they have, they each kind of talk a little bit different. So is White Mountain like a dialect of all the Apaches? Like you all have like similar beliefs or the same beliefs, core belief, but it's just the language that separates the way that you talk. Is that something that you've heard or you know about or can address? Um, <clears throat> can you hear me? Sure. Yeah. I, I have to wear my mask because I'm at work. And so sure. we're mandated to work, wear our mask when we're in the classroom. And I do have someone that's in the classroom with me. But um, from my understanding, we do have surrounding communities, but we all speak the same. Um, the only community that I would say that there's a, a really big difference in is CBQ. Um, they're more isolated. They're 50 miles from us. Um, they have more preservation as far as the teachings, um, especially the traditional teachings and this, the language. I mean, my cousin has a son and he's five and he speaks fluent. He's so cute. And to have little ones like that actually speak, you know, um, is kind of a rarity. So the, that's the only really big difference between the larger community here in White River and Sibiqui is Sibiqui 
you'll find a lot more um, fluent speakers and a lot of the language there is the old Apache versus this new slang stuff that people speak here <laughs> in White River. Yeah. What about um, Hickoria and uh, Mescalero and those Apache tribes? Those are, the language is different. Um, Very different. The only one that I noticed that we have similarity was is with is, is San Carlos. But um, my coworker is uh, San Carlos and I always tease her because I tell her, man, I'm still waiting on you trying to get done with what you're saying because, you know, with San Carlos, they speak slower <laughs> versus we speak a lot faster. So I always tease her about that. Um, but yeah, with all the tribes, the, the language is different. Um, you know, with the, with the bands of Apache, it is different. Um, but like I said, the only one we do have similarities with um, is San Carlos. But like I said, they speak a little bit slower. Um, and then also, you know, obviously we do have some similarities with words and stuff with the Navajo tribe as well. Right. Uh, so that's the, that was going to be the next question. What about Navajo? And because from what I understand, the Navajo and Apache were one tribe a long time ago. And then something happened there and, and you know, you went south and they stayed over there. And then a, a link language changed because of the um, trees. Yeah, from, from what I was told from my, my um, from what I was told from my grandpa, my grandfather on my mom's side, um, he was f uh, full full Navajo, um, so I'm quarter. But from what he had told me, and I've heard similar stories. Um, I've heard similar uh, stories from elders, um, including my grandmother. But what they said is time, and because of, you know, uh, the, the resources, you know, there was just too many people to feed. There was, I guess it came down to the resources, and they had a big celebration. And from that celebration, he said that the Navajos moved north, and the Apaches, um, you know, we were down south. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was going to be the follow-up question, or that just just again, uh, talking about different tribes and the understanding of how you know how because like here in Autumn, we do the same. You know, it's just dialects that separate us. But it's kind of funny, like Chu Chu, uh, the northern part of the reservation, uh, is very 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 similar and more to like uh, Sacaton uh, and Beep Chu when they talk. They use that na, -ah, you know, it's just something that they use up, up north. So again, it, the dialect difference or the white man's separating us, um, that changed that a lot of that and made it the way that, you know, we accepted that and we now say that, you know, oh, I'm in the river. Or, um, so, but again, I, I was just wondering about, because I know other tribes, I know, um, um, Josie talked about the uh, the different bands of uh, Paiute, and I know that uh, that they probably have the same issue regarding um, the the differences. But there's the the language base is generally the same. It's it's it, the words are generally the same um, as far as grammar, and but then things change. So, but again, celebrating that because I know that there are other tribes. Uh, other people from other tribes that are listening how much on this call and I think that it would be something really cool to, to have people go back and look at that in their own tribe um, because there it is true you know we have our slow uh, speakers are Sanavir you know we used to always joke about them but and our fast speakers are the other side on the west side so um, so again it's just it's just like that and I just wanted to ask that question Thank you for your response. Thank Sylvia, you, I appreciate you. I'm sure. Namachi, you up Sylvia on the chat or? Uh, yeah, uh, just, uh, just uh, Diana was um, mentioning that it was an excellent presentation and also thank you. Um, Camille, is not, um, were you gonna ask other students to share if uh, they have anything to share from other tribes, if there are some on the, on the call? Sure. Yeah. 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 Hi, Josie P. I, I know. 
Um, Josie, or do you have anything first of all? Do you have anything to add or? I just really think that even though we're from different places, we are all, like you said, we are all pretty much the same. We're human beings. And actually traveling around, I see very similar things between my people and your people. And it's really, it's a really neat thing how when you're interacting with people similar to yourself, you start to build that sort of familiar, that bond with each other and you start to realize we're not so different. Right. Thank you for saying that. Um, Andrea's asking, and um, I'm opening it up to any of the other people that are from different tribes other than uh, the one that Josie and uh, Naomi and Teresa are from. Uh, any, any other tribes from wherever uh, you wanna Share a little bit about your own culture, just like you know that th these ones did share share their um, presentation. Uh, tell us something about your your own tribe, your own um, ways, or you know where you're located. Um, you know, maybe if you know stuff like how big your land base is, or how many members. You know, that's something that that I think you can use, or you know, just tell us something that's maybe that's unique about your tribe. But first of all, where do you where do you actually from? Which state? Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Philip, and uh, I really. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the presentation. Um, I I was raised not really having i grew up in the in the treatment group home facilities uh, i didn't have a lot of um parents or anyone to uh sit down and explain the history to me and so i i lost out on a lot of that stuff growing up from nine years old to 18 i was in the group home slash treatment facilities and so um now i'm attending asu and um uh, my instructor is is um, is Andrea Ramon, and I, so I'm kind of like just putting a lot of this stuff together, and it's really good to to have um, all the, these these presenters um, just just um, you know lay lay down the historical facts about their land and and their the, um, their traditions and. And I know it's important. I just really didn't have that growing up. And I'm a father now, and I'm trying to learn as much as I can to teach them as well. I got a four-year-old and a ten-year-old, and I also got a twelve-year-old, and I'm just trying, you know, to soak up as much as I can. I don't really have I have a little bit of of um, understanding that I just picked up along the way, and it kind of it was reinforced um, when Teresa was speaking just kind of how being a good human being and um, just, just how, just how um, uh, just being kind to one another is really important. And so, um, yeah, that's, I'm from Salt River, I forgot to, to mention that. And um, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful to, to, to be here and to, uh, to learn from you all. Thank you. Sapo. Sapo. Am I up? Anybody else want to share? I'm going to call on you if you don't share. Just kidding. Uh, even autumn, if you want to share, um, you, you know, like I said, dialects are different and people have different customs from dialect to dialect. If you want to share, that's fine.
Sylvia, is there anything new in the chat or? No, there's there's nothing there's nothing more other than the, the last one I I gave you. Okay. Good morning, you. Okay. Almost up, uh, uh, Francis. Yeah, I think that's good for today, Camus. If you wanted to close us out. Okay, we'll go ahead and come uh, with this uh, presentation. And again, we'll be back at um, six o'clock um, if you want to join us again, or if you have people that maybe couldn't make it there during this time, that if you can invite them or share the link with them so they can come in and uh, participate when you go out. Um, just um, if you know you you heard the presentation how much, and if you think about something, you can join us back again at six o'clock. And then, you know, then you can, you know, question or you can make your comments or whatever. So I want to thank you, them, um, the people that were in, uh, were in part of this, making this uh, possible and for Hugum, the, the, the board for the TOCC and Hugum at San Carlos um, that are zooming in and for um, the HIMTA committee well, uh, to, to help us to get this thing going uh, for this Native American Heritage Month. So again, when you mark, then also on the um, on the, the next week, um, the, the next session will be on uh, Autumn Scholars. So there are some Autumn that are actually going further on and, um, and studying more and uh, trying to get masters and different kinds of degrees and also just generally uh, getting more knowledge um, in the outside world so they could help. So some of those will be sharing about their journeys and the different things that they've encountered. So if you're heading in that direction or thinking about heading the direction, or even if you're not in you Tijuana, know, you know, their stories, you can go ahead and um, um, watch out for that. Uh, this flyer that we put out for this actually has that on there. So if you want to join us for that time, almost up. So be more at you. You know, go ahead and um, release you all to go and hope you can turn on your camera and wave to Juana over there so Juana can see who you are and Juana will wave back. Okay. So you're free to roam. Bravo. Sapo. They don't want to leave, Camilus. <laughs> yeah, Iris is don't want to leave. Not the Maaga, um, who don't can the Masapa. Akimika. Francis? Are we getting to debrief or are we still okay? Apigi. Ah, 